ever wondered how growing startups are leveraging Google Cloud database services? Stay tuned to find out more. Hi everyone, I'm Jolene Teo and I'm a customer engineer at Google Cloud and welcome back to the Google Cloud Technical Guides for Startups where we are creating a series of videos for technical enablement to help startups to start, build and grow their businesses successfully and sustainably on Google Cloud. In our previous episode, we covered networking configurations. And moving on to today's episode, episode 7 of the series, we will be going through databases with a focus on Cloud SQL. For today, we're going to first go through the big picture on databases and when to choose which. We'll then deep dive into Cloud SQL and also run through a demo on Cloud SQL as well as how it interacts with some of the other services in Google Cloud. I'll then share with you some tips and tricks around cost as well as performance optimization. We'll then go through a sample architecture as well as a customer success story. And then we'll finally wrap up with some links you can go through with after this video. Alright, so let's get started. Let me give you an overview on how Google Cloud can help you with your database needs. As you can see, there is a full suite of database services available to meet your different requirements. Over here, you can see highlights of each type, from in-memory to relational to non-relational, as well as what each service is good for. Not only do we have our Google-built cloud-native database services where you can use MySQL or PostgreSQL, for ease of migration and compatibility, we also do support traditional databases such as SQL Server. And finally, to complete the portfolio, we also work very closely with our partners such as MongoDB, Confluent and many more to provide you with that integrated support. At this point, you must be wondering, how do you go about choosing which database service then? Well, I've got your back. Here is a flowchart to help you out with your startup's database service decision making. Depending on your application, you might need one or several of these services available. Now, because many startups leverage SQL databases for the transactional processing in their applications, which Cloud SQL supports, today we're going to zoom into database configurations with Cloud SQL. Building, running and maintaining infrastructure means less time creating value for your app. Run the same relational databases that you know without the hassle of self-management. This frees up time for you to focus on building great applications for your startup. Cloud SQL is a fully managed database service where Google takes care of the administrative tasks required to run a database, making it easy for you and simple to operate. Cloud SQL also has full compatibility with MySQL, PostgreSQL and SQL Server. With Cloud SQL, you can easily create read replicas and backups and there is also automatic failover ensuring that your database will always be available when you need it. Cloud SQL also offers easy integration with just about any application from Google Kubernetes Engine to Compute Engine and many more. Open up analytics possibilities with Cloud SQL's native integration with BigQuery where BigQuery can directly query from your Cloud SQL databases, running federated queries, enabling you to not need to move your data. Cloud SQL resides in secure Google data centers, ensuring business continuity. With reliable and secure services, backed by a 24-7 SRE team with a 99.95% SLA. There is also automatic data encryption at rest and in transit. You can also easily migrate your databases to Cloud SQL with minimal downtime using the database migration service. Lastly, monitor and troubleshoot with Cloud SQL Insights, which is a simple and open tool that can help developers to understand database performance issues on Cloud SQL. Maintenance is also very easy with automated patching. To dive a little deeper with Cloud SQL databases, Cloud SQL supports read replicas and cross-region read replicas. You can leverage replication to horizontally scale your application needs. To highlight, you can leverage cross-region read replicas for disaster recovery. Cloud SQL also has a built-in high availability option, which helps you to reduce downtime when a zone or instance becomes unavailable. With high availability, your data will still continue to be available to client applications. Cloud SQL also provides you with both automated and on-demand backups with point-in-time recovery. Backups help to protect your data from loss or damage. You can create a backup 
anytime you want on demand and this could come in really handy when you may be about to perform a risky operation on your database. You can also enable automatic backups. Where possible, schedule your backups where your instance has the least activity. Right, it's about time to give you a tour on how it looks like. Now on to the demo. We are going to continue on with the guestbook application demo. In this demo, I'm going to show you how you can create your Cloud SQL instances and then populate them with data being imported from Cloud Storage. We'll then explore some SQL statements within Cloud Shell and then we'll connect to BigQuery as well as Data Studio. And last but not least, we'll wrap up with a connection to Google Compute Engine. Alright, let's get started! For the first part of the demo, we'll be going through how to create Cloud SQL instances. Now moving into the console, first we're going to head over to Cloud SQL and click on the Create Instance button to create a new instance. You can easily configure your new instance according to exactly how you want it to be like. First, you're going to be prompted to select your database engine. Over here, you can see the different options available and for this demo, I'm going to just select PostgreSQL. Next, give your instance an instance ID and just remember that it has to be unique within the project. And then following that, put in a password. And following that, you can also choose a region to be either single zone or multi-zone. By default, it's multi-zone. And you can select the zone for the primary and failover instance. If you do not have specific requirements, feel free to leave it as any. And on the right hand column, you can see a summary of the different options and configurations you have selected. At this point, you can already create your Cloud SQL instance. If not, you can continue on to configure the advanced configurations. You can select your machine type, be it whether is it standard, lightweight, shared cost or high memory. You can also select the custom option to uniquely make selections for your memory as well as cores. As for the storage type, the typical selection is SSD for lower latency and higher throughput. However, you can also make the selection and switch over to HDD. You can choose your storage capacity or select custom if you intend to go beyond 200 GB. At the same time, you can check to enable automatic storage increases where if you run out of space, Google will allocate additional storage to you. As for connections, you have options for public IP or private IP. In this case, I'm just going to go ahead to select both. For automated backups, you can select a window of time for this to occur. It would be best to select the non-peak hours of your business where there is lower traffic to your SQL instances. Similarly, for patching, upgrades and maintenance, you can also select the non-peak hours. And lastly, you can also set up database flags as well as make use of labels which are really good for billing as well as tracking where your costs are coming from. Alright, and now we're good to go. I'm just going to hit create and we're just going to speed up this part until the instance is being created. Alright, our Cloud SQL instance is up and running. Moving on to the next section, in this demo, I'm going to show you how you can import data into your Cloud SQL instance and we're also going to connect to it to read the data. In this case, we will be using guest data for this demo. So first, we're going to create a database by going over to the database tab to create a new database called Guestbook DB. Over here, I have my Cloud SQL instance. And first, I'm going to select Import, which is the button right at the top. For source, I'm going to select the .sql file that I've already imported into Cloud Storage. And this file is what's going to be creating the tables. For the format, I'm going to select SQL and also include the destination. And following that, I'm going to repeat this process to import the data to populate those tables. In this part of the demo, we're going to be exploring the imported data using SQL statements in Cloud Shell. Now, we're going to connect to the SQL instance via Cloud Shell simply by selecting the button Connect using Cloud Shell. Enter the command to connect and authorize. And we're going to speed this part up a little bit as well. And then following that, also enter in your password to connect. From here, we can now run a couple of queries. So first, we can list the databases and then we can select one. And finally, we can then list perhaps the guests. Alright, and we are done. 
Now, I'm going to show you how to connect to BigQuery and Data Studio. Right, so first move to the BigQuery page, add external data source, and then select your connection type. In this case, I'm just going to go ahead and select Postgres, and then give it a name. Select your location over here. I'm just going to go ahead with US Central 1. And then following that, copy and paste your Cloud SQL instance ID. Enter in the password as well, and then click to create the connection. You should also see the connection being created in the left navigation menu. Alright, and from here, you can just start querying. In this example query itself, you can see the external query function as well as the connection ID. And this makes it very easy for you to query directly from Cloud SQL within BigQuery for running federated queries easily. On top of data analysis in BigQuery, you can also easily create a connection to Data Studio for data visualization. There are many connectors available, as you can see over here. And for this demo, we're going to select the Postgres connector. And then we're going to create a new report. From here, you can easily add charts. And I'm just going to speed up this part and show you the end result of how visualization can look like for you. All right, and we're done. Here is a sample dashboard to show you how you can use data visualization in connection to Cloud SQL with Data Studio. And finally, in this demo section, I'm going to show you how you can connect Cloud SQL back with Google Compute Engine. All right, so now we're going to head over to Google Compute Engine and then we're going to SSH in to set up the Cloud SQL proxy. So first, we're going to make sure that there are permissions by uploading the service account key that has both the Cloud SQL client as well as edit roles. Next, we'll then download the Cloud SQL auth proxy and also make the Cloud SQL auth proxy executable. We will then install the PostgreSQL client onto the Compute Engine instance and then start the PostgreSQL auth proxy. And finally, you can connect to the PSQL client and following that, you can already begin to start querying. We're going to run a couple of queries similar to earlier before to show you the connection. All right, it looks awesome and we're done. Now that you know how to configure your Cloud SQL database, I'll be sharing with you some of the best practices for cost as well as for performance optimization. We will be going through some of the top tips and I'll also put some links in the description box below for your further reading. For performance optimization, first of all, do consider a microservices architecture, sometimes known as vertical sharding. This refers to having multiple smaller databases for each microservice you may have as compared to having one monolith database for all of your services, which can help you to increase and optimize your performance. Remember that this is a general suggestion and perhaps in specific architectures, a monolithic architecture may work for you. Secondly, for your read-heavy workloads, do remember to add read replicas to offload traffic from your primary instance. Optionally, you can also make use of a load balancer like HAProxy to manage traffic to your replicas. Lastly, use good connection management practices such as exponential backoff and connection pooling. Using these techniques will help you to improve your application's use of resources and also to stay within the Cloud SQL connection limits. As for costs, the Cloud SQL Idle Instance Recommender helps to detect instances that might be idle. It then provides you with recommendations and insights on how you can reduce costs. Next, the Cloud SQL Overprovisioned Instance Recommender helps to detect instances that are unnecessarily large for a given workload. It then provides you with some recommendations on how you can resize these instances. Lastly, do leverage commit use discounts which are ideal for predictable workloads on a 1-year or 3-year basis which can give you significant cost savings. Now, let's explore some of the use cases involving Cloud SQL. As you can see over here, Cloud SQL works across many use cases from gaming to inventory management and many more. 
Next, let's zoom into one example, a sample fictitious gaming backend database architecture. Here, we can see all of the different databases in action. First, we have Cloud Firestore, a NoSQL document database which can be used for authentication as well as the player database. Cloud Memory Store is then used for storing regional in-memory caches which speeds up the access to frequently viewed data. Cloud SQL or Cloud Spanner then helps with the hosting of the game data. You can also log events to Cloud Bigtable, Google Cloud's NoSQL Columna database. And finally, you can also connect to BigQuery for data warehousing and gameplay analytics. And if we wanted to take a look at a real-life example, we have Crikey. Crikey is a mobile AR gaming startup that leverages on Google Cloud to bring diversity into the mobile AR gaming space. Crikey migrated to Cloud SQL and also uses some of the other Google Cloud services, which has helped them to reduce the rendering time for customers and also increase the speed of Crikey games. Using Cloud SQL has helped Crikey to decrease the load time of videos, improve the speed of games, resulting in higher ad engagement times. All in all, I hope that this video has given you a good understanding of Google Cloud Database services and how you can get started on Cloud SQL. And after this video, if you are still keen to find out more and cannot get enough of databases and Cloud SQL, do check out the links in the description box below. In our next episode, you will be learning all about Firebase. We'll first kick off with an overview of what Firebase is, how you can build better applications, improve application quality, as well as drive user engagement. We'll then go through a demo as well as a customer success story. Alright, and that's a wrap. See you in the next video.